Okay. So one thing that I was thinking while I was cutting up all the VODs and things like that and exporting them to YouTube, blah, 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 was that I should just go all out on this summoner build. And I might just do that. Good, you are here. Clario has made good on his promise. We are making ready to free your ship. Ikawa gestures towards your vessel, where a motley crew of Huana and Valian workers race to and fro. Um, I also increased the music volume slightly, and the overall volume a little bit, but reduced the effects volume. Because I, I was listening to some of the VODs, and the... The, uh, the voiceovers seemed a little bit low, and the music just maybe seemed a tad low. I say still that you are fortunate. The ship was nearly lost, but it will float. For how long, I cannot say. You will wish to find a friendly port with some speed, I think. Hmm. <laughs> Dang, this is savage. Uh, do you know where Nekataka is? So you will go to the great Kahanga city as well. You must sail north for some time, and then a little east. Take care in Nekitaka, outsider. It will close its jaws around you, and you will never notice. Come, we will see your defiant out to sea. Never know. Two blessings gained? I guess you can't see the achievements over here. Because I'm covering them up like a scrub. We should address the matter of our ship's resources before we get underway. Okay. It saddens me to inform you that we lost several crew and most of our provisions during the storm. However, Port Marge appears to be well supplied, and I expect the recent disaster has left several sailors in want of a ship. I suggest we contract for additional supplies and crew before we return to open water, or our voyage may indeed be a short one. Uh, in Deadfire, not every ship on the sea is friendly. Hostile ships can attempt to engage you in a ship-to-ship -ship combat. During ship combat, distance and orientation to the enemy are vital to your success. Distance determines if an enemy is in range for your cannons or of your cannons, or if you're in range of theirs. Orientation determines what cannons, if any, you can fire, as well as how easily your ship may be hit. Turning your side to the enemy may allow you to fire the most cannons, but it makes you an easier target. Each ship must maintain its sails and hull. Damaged sails limit the speed of a ship. If a hull is destroyed, the ship will sink. A ship's cannons are also limited by how much ammunition the ship is carrying. When two ships get close to each other, they can board or ram. Boarding locks the two ships together and transition to deck, deck to deck fight between the two ship crews. A ramming attack does damage to the hull of both ships. If one does not sink, the battle transitions to a deck to deck battle. Once you have victoriously sunk the other ship or defeated them in deck to deck combat, you can plunder what remains. Plunder typically includes ship resources, treasure, and occasionally the unique triumph of a noteworthy enemy captain. Coins can be shared with the crew to improve morale, and triumphs are always flown from your ship's rigging. Okay, well, let's go grab whatever this is. Oh, you... Stay away from me. Oh, man, you do not want none of this. What is wrong with you chasing me down like that? As the Defiant leaves Port Mahe behind, you casually observe dozens of other ships coming and going, mostly fishing and trade vessels. One craft stands out, an imposing dow replete with cannons crests into view across the Defiant's starboard bow. The flag raised high atop its sail signifies a wish to parlay. However, the Dow approaches at an aggressive speed, suggesting that it may not be easily turned away. 
face your pursuer head on. Uh, actually, we're going to do nothing. The distance closes quickly, and soon the massive Dow's hull rolls on the waves beside your ship. Boarding planks emerge and are quickly cast onto your ship, along with shouts from the crew notifying you that their captain will be boarding. Several well-armed men across the planks, their eyes watching every inch of your ship. The crowd parts open to make way for their captain, a tall, well-dressed man. He peers at you with one impeccably groomed eyebrow raised. Following behind the captain and in stark contrast strides an unkept Orlin, a fair of pistol grips protrude from his belt and he casually twirls a stocky firearm around his index finger. A shaggy face framed by long cobalt blue hair and a wildly braided cerulean beard makes the crooked smile he directs at you seem almost sinister. Dun dun dun! What are the chances it's gonna be that guy that's in the artwork right there? Who has two pistols and blue hair. On behalf of the Principe Sen Patrina, I must request we meet in Parley. The broad shouldered captain up tilts his chin in greeting. When he smiles, his left cheek divots a shallow dimple. Um, <laughs> request denied. I like that. Uh, you have my attention. Agrasima, I will make this quick. He flourishes a courtly bow. I have heard some marvelous tales regarding your ventures in the Deerwood. In fact, you are the first dragon slayer I have ever met, outside of a grave. Some fools would seek to make a fortune by pilfering from one such as you. I take it he is not one of those fools. Uh, perhaps we should listen. Loth crosses his arms, cautious but curious. Under the captain's words, you hear a faint but incessant buzzing. It blooms, overwhelming Bronte's voice, drowning out all else around you. No one else seems to notice. A vision. Thunder cracks between your ears, and you glimpse a different sunshine sea behind your eyes. We're gonna let the uh, we're gonna let the visions. No, let's let's fight against them. We ain't gonna be we ain't gonna sucker down on these visions. Close your mind against the spiritual invasion, but the visions slide around and through your defenses, washing over you as implacably as the sea, implacably as the sea. I, I can't say words, man. The visions streak across your mind's eye, fleeting and incoherent. An elf, dark haired and battle scarred, stepping across the gulf between vessels. She shakes Ferrante's hand, and warmth spills through you excitement, pride, respect. The imagery melts like candle wax into a lamp-lit galley swamped with the scent of unwatered rum and sweet fruit with sailors and their songs and sweat. The scene billows away, ice cold and clawing, replaced with the crew on deck solemn and staring as Ferrante grasps one of their own by the throat. No, not one of their own, no more. You don't steal from family and stay family. Tears and mucus wore the, the man's features as Fronte reads the man his last rites. Thief or no, they'll consign him to Andra as tradition dictates. The vision passes, leaving you blinking on the deck of the Defiant, looking into Ferrante's face. He raises an eyebrow. I believe you have met such a fool. Captain Benweth of the Drake. Despite the gravity of his words, he smiles grandly and the dimple cuts deeper into his left cheek. Uh... I know a cipher's work. I know a cipher's handiwork when I feel it. Tell yours to stay out of my head. The blue Orlin's mouth falls open. Careful, ship hunter. Mind that you do not confuse a useful skill set for a non-expendable one. Bronte glares at Seraphin. The Orlin steps back, blinking away the rebuke, and peers at you, probing. His yellow-green eyes narrow, unfocused, as if trying to remember something. Then the captain turns a warm smile back at you. My apologies. Rest assured, it will not happen again. 
Apologies, Captain. Didn't mean it, really. We're up all night, you know, searching out our friend here. He looks to you. You've been at sea a while. Your mind starts playing tricks on you, eh? Well, mine plays tricks on others, too. Usually don't mean much. Maybe see a bit of shadow, hear a bit of tune. Not less a person sensitive. Like, say, a watcher. He winks. And you're very little kid. <laughs> uh, you say this Captain Benweth is the one who attacked me. Ah, the short-sighted scoundrel has been wreaking havoc in the area for months. He is no son of Velia. I do not fault his ancestry, but he disregards too much the grand heritage we Principi represent. Benweth is the second most selfish captain within the Principi's newest generation. He risks all that we value. Hmm, I like that. If Benweth's or Benweath's the second most selfish captain, who's the first? He pinches at his lips, eyes narrowing thoughtfully, but you can see that he's biting back a mischievous grin. Perhaps I have said too much. This is a problem solely of my own, for now. <laughs> I love it. Uh, if Benweath is one of your own, shouldn't you take responsibility for his actions? Benweth is no captain of mine, Aimiko. It is not beneath my flag his Drake sails. Yet I do seek to temper his actions when they would endanger the Principi altogether. Where might I find Captain Benweth? Say, I wanted to teach him a lesson. Benweth's Drake took damage during the storm. Eventually he will need to dock for repairs, and when he does, Serefin can find him for you. Bronte flourishes a hand toward the Orland at his side. He is rather an unrefined creature, but he is a most skilled ship hunter, I assure you. Unrefined? Begging your pardon, Captain, but I'll be the eye fucking model of the gentleman of fortune. The Orland <laughs> scoffs. Like he just scoffed in the voice acting. As for Benwith, a sucker of squid tits be as predictable as the tide. But wager all my furriest bits that he'd set sail for deadline. That would be felicitous indeed. As I believe the traitor Remaro hides there as well. I quite enjoy killing two men with a single bullet. Wouldn't have even thought of it if you hadn't brought it up, sir. Yet you feel a surge of anger that's not your own. Seraphin spits towards you. Spins towards you and bows again. Now, I ain't hardly in any hurry to leave the fine company of the gentlemen of leisure. But the captain be right about me finding your mark. Adding to that, you sail into Fort Deadlight not knowing your innies from your outies. You might very well find the locals cannon fucking your boat to sodden splinters. He grins broadly. I like this guy. This guy is great. Um. Why loan me your best ship hunter? What venture does not require an investment to be prosperous? The Seraphine is an allowance, which I expect you will return. In one payment or another. Welcome aboard, Seraphine. Oh, you won't be regretting this, Watcher. At least so long as you keep us heavy in grog and light on the onions. Ugh, them dirty shit apples ain't never agreed with me, and I'll be suspecting they never will. He pats his belly as he strides to your side. He's not sleeping near my berth, I promise you that much. I sail now for Dunnage, my own safe port. I will await you there, should you be successful in schooling our wayward captain. Okay. Well, I can, he can be a cipher, a barbarian, or a barbarian cipher. Ciphers, if I remember correctly, are the debuff guys. They have the mind control stuff. So I would want him to be a cipher. My current party composition. Yeah. Actually, I might get rid of Aloth. He was weak as a sucker food. I do want to try a 
a multi-class at some point. Someday. Alrighty then. Uh, so, first order of business. Watcher's reputations and dispositions are displayed on the reputation wheel. A companion's reputation wheel displays their reputations with other party members and any biases they might have. I don't, I don't, I don't trust you, dog. Oh. Put up by people who claim their own merits and defiance of all decorum and decency. Well, you're gonna get the stepping, man, because ain't, ain't nobody ain't nobody with you, man. I need to figure out how to swap party members and keep your grimoire. I guess you're not even wearing hardly anything. Um, how do I change party members? Party management. This recruit. Accept. I'm going to go back to Port Mage. I have an injured crew member. Apply. Um, we need a uh, twenty nine. Medical supplies, we need 72. Cannon shot, we need 69. Uh, we'll take 20 of these, 20 of those. I think we're good. But over here, let's head to the Kraken's Eye. Doesn't really take 15 minutes to get there. I've been in that town. Of course. All right, let's level up. Okay. Okay, so this guy can be my mechanics guy. Who is my other mechanics person? What I think. Oh, it was him. Maybe, maybe I should make him my sleight of hand guy. Except he's. I'm not going to keep him around forever. Let's double up on the mechanics here. Um, I did lose our insight guy. So let's bring back the insight. Alrighty. A cipher who have developed their powers without formal training. Cipher spells have a chance to trigger an unexpected effect. This can manifest in spectacular ways, often but not always, aiding the party. Sometimes wild mind manifestations can cause undesirable effects. I don't know if I'm a fan, but we gonna take that, because this spell apparently is ridiculously good. All right, so we'll do that. All right, mechanics, insight. Hmm. 
We're gonna work our way to Puppet Master, but in the meantime... Ooh, yeah. Definitely that one. One more penetration. Um, go with that. Mechanics again, insight. Oh, okay, so you cannot choose both. He doesn't have any damaging spells. Probably get him one. Take that, I guess. Okay, so he has the blunderbuss. Let's also give him pistole proficiency. And mechanics and insight. That one. And whenever they target the Cypher's will. Okay. Sounds great. I like that one. Yep, like that one. Alright, level up! Um, Arcana, Diplomacy. Okay. So if a skeleton falls in battle, it splits into two lesser skeletons. Get. Will-O-Wisps. I haven't been summoning skeletons really all that much. Oh, I have, I have two, two stuff. Bouncing Beam of Pure Light that restores health and grants. Pretty good. Meh. Meh. Range from a constant health regeneration. We're definitely going to want to pick up that. We'll pick that up. Problem is this is four phrases. That's a lot of phrases. We're gonna go skeletons. Level up. Athletics. Revival. Gaining significant additional penetration during the attack. Hmm. One discipline. I think we might go with this. Actually, we're going to go with uh, the additional... Oh, we have two. Go with both of those. Okay. 
Right, level up. Alchemy. Religion. I think we're going to grab Consecrated Ground, most likely. Yep. Let me get another one. I like Divine Mark. We'll grab that as well. This one I really like, though. I like what I chose. Right, and you. Um, sure, we'll go mechanics. Intimidate. You're still a level behind other people. Okay, so we're going two weapon style with him. between these two. I think I'm going to go with thick skinned. Alright, more weapons. That one, I guess. Oh. What is this number right there? Focus. Interesting. Still kicking, eh? What'll it be? There's plenty of people looking for passage out of here. Let's see if any of them catch your interest. All right, no crew members. Fruit Adventurers. So this is what I'm considering doing. I think I'm gonna go replace uh, Ruben with a level four adventure that's also another summoner. Well, m maybe not like right now, but in the future. Or maybe... What does Aloth do? Not, uh, sorry. I don't even get to see what his stuff is. Okay. Okay, well, that was going to be my plan, but I, I think I'm going to go all out on the summoning. Kind of sounds cheap. You think it's smart, giving the Juan all these guns? Why not? Well, just, they might use them? On each other, most likely. Alright, let's head out by sea. Three minutes, are you kidding me? Working with injury. All right, who's injured? There are several jobs on the ship that the crew needs to fill while sailing. Every ship needs deckhands, cannoneers, and a helmsman, and all ships benefit from having a cook, surgeon, and navigator on board. The larger ships even require a boatswain, I think is 
supposed to be called a boatswain. It's uh, ridiculous. Uh, to keep the deckhands in order. To place a new sailor on the ship, you must be in port. Click an available sailor from the known sailor section and then move them into the open role on the ship. Note that each sailor has different talents. Not all sailors will be well suited for a given job. Filter through the known sailor job types to see who excels at each role. Your crew consumes both food and drink while adventuring. The type of food and drink you feed them will adjust their morale. More expensive provisions make them happier. Cheap food and drink will lower their morale over time. Even so, few things will impact your crew's morale as badly as letting them starve. A starving crew with low morale may mutiny. If neglected for long enough, some may even die. There are several jobs on a ship. The captain determines how likely the ship is to gain advantage, first move, and other bonuses in a ship-to-ship -ship combat. Deckhands are required to perform any maneuvers in ship-to-ship -ship combat. If a ship does not have enough deckhands, it will move more slowly on the world map. The more skilled deckhands a ship has, the faster it will move in combat. The boatswain counts as a deckhand, but is more important for their ability to accelerate the completion of specific or special events such as putting out a deck fire on a ship by coordinating their actions. No, the streamer stopped streaming. Never I'll close that, I guess. Life is hard. Uh, a helmsman is required for turning and jibe actions in ship-to-ship -ship combat. More experienced helmsmen make the ship harder to hit after performing a turn or jibe action. Cannons cannot fire without a cannoneer assigned to them. The more experienced a cannoneer, the more accurate their fire. The surgeon increases the rate of healing for injured crew members in reserve both in combat and while traveling. Two jobs have no combat rules, but may be called upon to resolve ship events. The navigator increases speed on the world map, and the cook reduces food consumption while traveling. Okay. You... ...are injured. Okay, so you're in the cooking position right now. Anybody else? Nobody else can cook? Come on, guys. I need to cook. Nobody can cook. as a seasoned deckhand. All right, well, I guess, I guess we're putting you there. Plenius upgrades. Give you guys some ale. Water. Hagfish. I, I guess that's good enough. Guess we're just going to explore the open sea now. Fruit. That's some water.
Click on the Known Locations drop-down list to bring up a list of places you have discovered. You can also search for a location by name. Ships fa travel faster in deep water, shallower. Ships travel faster in deep water, shallower, or sl slower in shallows. Makes sense. Reading is hard. So this is this is the deep water. Uh, you're sailing past a reef when Ben Easy shouts out, pointing to port. There lists a ship stranded in the middle, perched on a narrow shoal. It tips and rolls with the passing waves. Hanging from its mast is a blue flag showing an image of a crescent moon sinking beneath the waves. Your crew gathers around, murmuring in low, excited voices. Rum Dum Rigier rushes to the railing. Captain, that's a gift bearer ship. No telling what sorts of treasures it's got. A kook snorts. These like interesting. Uh, gift bearers carry sentimental junk, worthless stuff. No, that's a smuggler's ship. It's a classic disguise. Shield sister Dahlia spits into the water. And it's <laughs> a stupid one. Gift bearers only visit landlocked settlements. It's a trap. Um. I don't have a spyglass. What was that about gift bearers? Fixes a pensive frown on the wreck. No offense, Captain, but the servants of Andra collect things people want to forget and consign them to the sea. Anything gift bearers might be carrying would be stuff nobody wants. Thoughts? Choose our perception king over here. The shake of the head, Ruben frowns and says nothing. What a jerk. Uh, prepare a skiff. We'll have to row out and climb the hole. Roll the skiff above the reefs, the waves tossing it. The bottom of the small boat occasionally scraping across jagged structure below. You tie off and snag. Tie off on a snag of coral next to the wreck. The water is rough and the hole slick with brine, but you're able to find purchase between the shifting planks. Climb up. Pull yourself up using bent planks and barnacles for holds. You've almost reached the main deck when a wave slams against the ship. You hear a crash from below as your vessel rocks, or as the vessel rocks. Your legs slip out from under you and your fingers dig into wet lumber. Once the ship settles, you resume your climb and make it to uh, make it to the safety of the deck. Yeah. Uh, the ship is deserted. You don't even find corpses. If the ship had a skiff, it's missing two. Search for salvage. Uh, you find several crates of supplies and several more of assorted odds and ends. Handkerchiefs, bead jewelry, cracked scrimshaw, a child's doll. You think back to Ikruk's comments and wonder if this might have been a smuggler's vessel after all. Yep. Search for evidence of smugglers. Let's see. Go with perception. Browning Ruben points out a series of scuff marks along the deck as as if the box of junk has been moved repeatedly over the same spot. You slide it aside and find a trap door underneath. Within rests a small chest brimming with golden skelling. Hey. Ruben whistles, smugglers after all. Among the coins rests a small figurine of an imp of all things. Interesting. Summons two dudes. You load your find onto the skiff and row back to your ship. Hey! Okay, so 
Nakataka is over there. Or Deadlight is over there. The Dead Fire Merchant, Merchant. Oh! The ring of a bell comes to you on a cold wind. The ring comes again and again until soon the air is full with the sound of a thousand, thousand bells ringing all at once. You feel a resonance in your core, a bell ringing in tune with all the others. Something in you bends, then breaks, and you are borne away on the ringing tide, just another peal among the many. Sorry about that noise. The tide of bells recedes. You lever yourself up onto your knees and realize you have been here before. You stand in Bareth's realm. You are alone. And then, you are not. An indistinct figure stands before you, flickering between forms like a fire cast shadow. A fixed, taunting grin. Bottomless black eyes. A yawning chasm in the earth. The aspects of Bareth, the Usher, and the Pallid Knight shift in and out of focus. And at their back, four indistinct shades hover. You feel an eternity stretch out behind each of them, reaching back to places so distant and yet so near you cannot comprehend their size. The shifting image of Bareth settles on the aspect of the Pallid Knight. Watcher. She intones. Her voice is the discordant clangor of gongs struck out of time. Some uh, missing text there. I tasked you to discover Aethys' intentions. Tell me what you have learned. Hmm. I like these little these little things. They're a little distracting sometimes, but I like them. Uh, let's keep with our rational path here. He's draining souls from veins of luminous Adra. The pallid knight knits her brows. He does not seek to return to the beyond? Intriguing. Her sickly pale skin pulls tight across the bones of her face, as if the shell of this aspect does not quite fit the impossible creature it contains. The figure nearest Bareth dissolves and reforms in the image of a thin-lipped, ancient crone whose face has felt the melting kiss of fire. The goddess Wodica strides forward. Does Aethys frighten you, Bareth? He should. Magran subdued Aethys' influence once before, and yet he returned. From out of Wodica's shadow shuffles a hunched, bald man you recognize as the god Scan. His skin is mapped with swollen lash scars, and breath whistles through the ragged hole in his face where his nose once was. He does not speak, but stares up at Wodica, with naked loathing plain on his ruined face. Wodica steeples her long, knob-jointed fingers. We must annihilate Aethys now, before he makes a rash decision we cannot easily annul. Okay, I guess I guess I guess we're done with voice acting here for on the narration. Uh, she casts a sly look at the pallid knight from the corners of her eyes. A moon would do the job nicely. Wodica says and grins. <laughs> Where's all that at? I don't see that. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm pretty sure we need that. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, yeah, let's go with three. A voice echoes from the shape nearest Bareth. The lava is too large to be moved and Kaltha too quick to be caught. Even for a god of Wodica's strength and apparent lunacy. The figure beside the aspect of Bareth flows forward in a swirling cloud of ash. The ash falls to the tiles and reveals a molten-skinned woman, leaning on a monstrous, wicked-edged broadsword. 
Mogren's glowing lips curl in disdain. We must find a solution to the problem of Aethys that is neither do nothing nor destroy the world. I acted in haste during the Saints' War. You will not goad me into doing the same now. To move against him while his plans are unknown would be the height of foolishness. We must find wisdom in precaution. Magrin says. Uh, what kind of precautions do you suggest? Magrin looks at you as one might a wayward gob of spit on one's shoe. It is no business of yours what the gods decide. Then why'd you bring me here, suckers? Get me out of here, you guys make your decision, I be going about my way. Another of the silent figures steps forward, and the warm, golden light of a summer's afternoon spills across your face. Let's all take a deep, calming breath. Perhaps cooler heads will prevail. Behind Helia's words, you hear the soft coo of doves. Hmm. Aethys has been separated from us for too long. Isn't it possible he intends only to gather enough souls to reclaim his realm in the beyond? He should be welcomed. He you look up then into avian eyes. Oops. Through them, you see clouds of starlings converge and divide. You know, I'm just gonna say nothing. Scan shuffles forward. Yes, yes. We should welcome Aethys' return to the fold. His gratitude we can leverage to cajole him into divulging his plot. Then, when he believes himself to be in our good graces, we do as Wedeka suggests, and crush him into the earth. Scan pauses, inspecting you. Ah, and here is the Watcher who wiped dear desperate Alice's mind. You could have let my followers help her kill the man who tormented her. But you did not. Curious. Scan licks the ragged edge of his lipless mouth and grins, then turns to Helia. I did not expect such a deliciously ruthless idea from you, Helia. I am impressed. Helia's feathered crest stands on end. You... You wretched little creature. Hmm. I'm gonna say nothing. The pallid knight gestures for silence. Aethys cannot be killed, but he may be subdued. Yet to do so will take immense power and time. She Both stand in his favor. I I'm kind of confused because sometimes the voice acting is done. Like... It's done but then i go to move on and then magically there's like some voice acting after that and i just i, I just i just don't know Magrin grits her black glass teeth that is why we must ascertain his plans before he has the chance to put them into motion she begins to pace her steps leave little trails of fire in her wake Magrin stops and balls her hands into flaming fists even if we manage to destroy his current form, there is the possibility he could return if he has not already absorbed all of his children. I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay quiet again. Wodica waves the gods to silence. Aethys gathers strength. His strength is a threat to us. Her voice takes on a sharp, almost panicked edge. There is no sensible answer to the question of a resurgent Aethys other than decisive final action. Here I am, just chilling. We will act when it is appropriate to do so and not before. The pallid knight steps away from the half circle of assembled gods. She pulls herself up to a great height. The words she speaks next come not from her mouth, but from all around you. Follow him, Watcher. The black of the Pallid Knight's irises expand until her eyes are as dark and cold as the void between stars. She bends down and brings her ghostly face level with your own. Your debt to me remains unpaid. Going with one. 
is is what I want to do. But I'm gonna go with five. She stares at you, unblinking. Like a needle drawn to a magnet. You are pulled toward her one compulsory step at a time. Helpless to resist, you tumble into her impossible eyes. You fall wildly, endlessly, unable to find your bearings or slow your spin. And in the distance, above, no, behind you, comes an insistent ringing. You angle yourself toward it, searching for the sound. A small silver bell appears just inches from your fingertips. You reach for it, straining to still its interminable ringing. The moment you touch it, your soul slams into your body with all the force of a fall from the top of the sky. You blink open your eyes and find yourself on the floor of your ship's cabin. Alone. Hopefully we can dodge this ship that just like, like, made a 90 degree turn and was gunning for us. We're lucky he despawned. I'll Let's take care of this. loot my own ship. Who that? The Neasy. I shall. My lord, what do you require? Ship life sure is an adventure, ain't it? Just think of all the places we can sail to, all the sights we could see. This is nothing like being stuck on a farm or cloistered in the back of a temple. Jody wraps her sickle against her thigh as she studies the boat's layout. Satisfied by whatever she sees, she tilts her head to you with a small smile. Tell me what's on your mind? N no. You need me, I'll be two whoops and a hauler away. Two whoops with a whoop and a whoop and a boop and a boop and a boop. Definitely want to go summon or build. While on the deck of your ship, you can select blah to go on the world map. Why, thank you. Forgot to save. I hope that ship despawned. It did not. Right. Oh, how do I dock? There we go. We gotta find a docking spot. We'll get some water. Caverns of Zar Tuk Tuk. Howling Gorge. The desert wind carries a sibilant susurrus. Man, can, can we bring out the dictionary for this game? Because, <laughs> my goodness, two words back to back. Uh, susurrus to your ears from the canyon ahead, punctuated by cracks and pops. It reminds you of eggs on a hot pan or a fire in a dry brush. The low growl that accompanies it, however, raises the hair on your on the back of your neck. So we got a cipher. Let's search for the presence of other minds. Seraphim's eyes slide close and breathing slows. You feel a faint tingle of the cipher's abilities probing the edge of your own soul before turning outwards. I, Cap, got twixt three and five minds ahead. One of them be right big and twice as hungry. It's a... Uh, any scowls. Uh, listen carefully.
The sound resolves into a rhythmic chittering, slowly and cyclically, cyclic, cy cyclically rising and falling. It sounds like a chorus of voices, inhuman voices. We're gonna go forward. You carefully enter the desert canyon, keeping to the shade cast by the tall standing stones. Ahead of you, a group of Zarops chant, hopping back and forth on skinny legs, shaking their spears. Nested between them rises the black, leathery form of a drake. The creature's rings, wings rise above it as it tears at a corpse of a boar at its feet. Hmm. Continue watching. The mighty twist of its muscular neck, the drake tears the boar in half. It rises up on its legs, lifts its head, and swallows the back half of the boar whole. The lump of the animal visibly travels down the reptile's throat. One of the Zarbs hops forward. It tears its feathered headdress from its head and tosses it aside. It drops its staff a moment later and spreads its arms before the drake. The large beast peers down at the Zarb, then, with the flash of movement, eats the small wilder in a single bite. The other Zarbs cheer, banging their spears against their shields. I mean, I kind of want to fight this. Use the distraction to sneak closer. Nice. You move quietly from stone to stone, entering the canyon without drawing the creature's attention. Oh, I didn't I didn't get to fight it. I I wanted to get closer. I didn't want to avoid the fight. Oh. I can avoid the fight if I really wanted to. Get into position here. I uh, guess we need to redo this, don't we? Oh my gosh, what happened here? All right, here we go. Certainly. Wait, look there. We'll summon that right there. You, sir. Try, uh, try doing that. This thing isn't doing the job. Oh, you need that on. Good and stuck. Uh, you're paralyzed. Where is my guy? Where are you going? This thing isn't doing the job. I'm paralyzed. <laughs> All right, you're casting. It might be too late, though. It wasn't. Whoops. Calls upon the souls, blah blah blah. Okay, that's just kind of blah. Go ahead and do that. How 
long is it going to take you to cast that? It's going to take a pretty long time. Let's drink one of those, maybe. Hey, you... Come on, some of those. To alarm you, but I'm slowly dying of poison. Oh, the Drake is dead. No one noticed that, right? What kind of what kind of bodying these guys, man? I don't, maybe maybe it's the summons. I don't know if it's a summons, but these fights are getting uh, won pretty quickly and handily. There, there are a few things that kind of kind of difficult, but uh, you know, done and done. So uh, let's continue exploring. That's it. Yes, that's it. That was great. If I didn't know any better, I think I'd be playing on the, uh, the lowest difficulty right now. Let's go into the cavern of Tsar Tuk Tuk. You come upon the opening to a small cave. Putrid gusts of hot air burp from within, deep within, and you hear the faint chitter and hiss of Zarops in earnest conversation. Enter the cave. Your boots crunch through a drift of brittle bones as you creep into the Zarop lair. <laughs> Uh, the base air of effect for many spells can be increased by intellect and magic. Okay, I can't go through that. Let's take a look. Go oh, sneaky, sneaky. to shoot that. No. Wait, look there. Shoot it again. Okay. That didn't that didn't work. <laughs> like so Tree. right I'm in some skeletons that's fine no rush oh okay You got two of these spells. Yeah. 
Right, and I'd rather you cast... Oh, that goes around you. I don't want you to cast that. Cast that instead. Not to alarm. Alright, already summoning the drakes. Skirmisher, Fire Blight. There's a war chief in there. Let's grab that guy. Not too alarm. Oh, you're about to die. Why don't you cast Second Wind? But I'm slowly dying of poison. Did I get the charm? Did not get the charm. Cast that. Ah, that's that's not gonna be good. That heal didn't do a dang thing. Focus for that. How do I get focus from him? Well, second wind. Hey, we had some good times. Still don't understand how this guy gets stuff. How do you get your resource? I guess we'll try. Uh, charm, okay. Got the charm. All right, we're already summoning. It's almost done. All right, you are getting destroyed over here. Can I disengage? Let's go ahead and uh, do that. What else are you gonna do? Um. 
a long time. Uh oh. Oh, okay. That's that's not a new encounter. See, this guy's almost dead. We might be able to survive. It's not working. Oof. Okay. What do you need? Sure. That was kind of rough. Guess I spoke way too freaking soon. Okay. Seems cool. Who else is using shields? I don't, I don't want him doing that. Like what? Just why? Let's see, I'm using a shield. One is a small shield, so that new one that I got will be great. I don't have a cape either. You have... Oh, that's 8 armor rating. That's pretty good. I believe we have a necklace in here somewhere. There we go. That's all yours. Okay, so he is getting destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. Have any weapons? I can replace this. 17 to 24. Have a spear. That's it. What do you need? Uh -huh. I think what I'll do. Go like that. Serious? Entropy. I'll do. Chicken. Lager. A lord's foot and an heavy bullet, our cap. Whoa, whoa, look. I already know he's not alone. I'm on it. He was totally alone. Mother Sharp Rock. From between the bars stares a frail and sickly Zara. It shrinks when you near, pressing itself against the farthest corner of its cage, trembling. Around its neck are the remnants of a bedraggled feather crest. Paint is smeared across its face, but the paint is old, flaking. It hasn't been reapplied in some time. Dang. The Zarb's regalia tells you they must have been an important figure in the tribe, perhaps a high priest or a mother, but its condition makes clear that those days are long past. What happened to you? Zarb watches you with unreadable expression on its face and says nothing. Break open the cage. You definitely pop the poorly crafted lock off the cage. 
Zarp scrambles to get out of your reach. When you make no move to capture it, it stares between you and the cage door, blinking rapidly. It tenses, then bursts out the door. Aw. I'm back. Zarb watches you intently. Uh, who locked you up? Zarb scuttles behind you and grabs a hold of your leg and points across the cave to a corpse of a large, well-adorned Zarb, one of their champions in scowls. Why are you following me? Zarb tilts its head slowly and blinks. It narrows its eyes like it can't quite figure out what you mean. It glances back at the cage you freed it from, then stares at you expectantly. You always follow your leader around. Zarp clings tightly to your leg and refuses to let go. You want to come with me? It stares up at you unblinking and finally releases your leg. When you make no move to chase it away, it hops up and down excitedly. There it gives a nod and a wink. Full compliments? Oh, so you're a boat person. Man, I was hoping you would be a party member. That's fine. Is that the whole place? That is the whole place. I don't think... Did I go up there? I don't think I went up there. Something. Boing dagger. Ready. Let's get out of here. It's still pretty cool to find a, a, a ship person, though. I dig it. Better than nothing. That's for sure. And we got the full compliment achievement. Island name. How about Zar Tuck Tuck? Yeah. Move. Go we'll check this campsite out. Isle. Go to Broken Spear Pass. Bones crunch underfoot, strewn across the sand, are skeletons half buried and wind blown dunes or lying bleached and baked in the sun. Their corpses still wear the tattered remnants of their clothing, their packs tangled in their limbs. Worms circle like vultures high above you. Worms? Circle? What's wrong with you? Oh, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta stop that. You feel a tug at your leg. Mother Sharp Rock clings to your boot, staring out at the dunes, then looks up at you. Her eyes are wide with fright. She fears this place. Search the skeleton. You approach the nearest skeleton and untangle the pack from its remains. As you disturb the skeleton, several sand blights rise up from the desert with a great gust of wind and head straight for you. How did I fail that? I have 16 perception. That's the bomb diggity perception. Who out here has better perception than that? Okay. Right. Come on, get the cast. Thank you. Oh, 
ahead. Wait, 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 wait. Why don't you cast this instead? All right, there goes our summons. Recast. Not even close. Not a frog in the figurehead. Futile. On your side. All right, you. Let's go ahead and. Put a heal right here. No. Oh, did did that you get cancelled, man? Come on. Oh, get the cast off. There we go. Nice. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Indeed. I'm here. Worth a look. On it. Lesser land hands. Grants land hands. Oh. Wow, that's... Wow. We're gonna put that on you. Oh, you already have something. Guess we're gonna put it on you. As our tank needs you to be surviving stuff. Seeing if there's any more, you know. Hidden secrets and stuff. Okay. Let's get a move on. <laughs> 